In the 1970s, before Joe Weider created the Ms. Olympia contest, there were the NABA girls, who were featured on non-Weider bodybuilding magazine covers and seen in NABA contest reports. Standing out, was Jamaican Sandra Kong, who won the 1978 NABA Universe, as well as Bridget Gibbons, winner of both the 1977 NABA Ms. Britain and Universe, along with the 1978 NABA Ms. Britain. In a matter of years, the femininity and natural beauty Kong and Gibbons represented would be eclipsed by a more competitive, hormonally augmented display of muscle, veins, and paper-thin skin. The following video clip from Mark Anders Rich Piana mini-documentary, created before the Ms. Olympia was relaunched in 2020, discusses how, not intentionally but, for all intents and purposes, Rachel McClish was the feminine Trojan horse which helped usher in heavily masculinized women into bodybuilding. The Miss Olympia contest kicked off in 1980 with Rachel McClish winning the title. In the following years judges, unable to judge aesthetics, quickly started rewarding women who were the leanest and had the largest muscles. Bodybuilding judges couldn't grasp quality so they rewarded quantity. Less fat and more muscle must mean better, they thought. Women started extreme dieting and taking drugs to induce paper-thin skin a condition they usually had to wait to age 80 or 90 to obtain naturally. Needless to say, they also took male hormones. Ironically, to have enough muscle to compete in a body contest supposedly designed for women. 2014 was the last year the Ms. Olympia contest was held. The male fans, known as schmoes, who liked women with geriatric skin quality, herculean muscularity, and enlarged clitorises, were heartbroken. Whereas women like Kong and Gibbons fell more naturally into their NABA titles because their end products weren't too far from their original shapes, the IFBB Ms. Olympia, after a Rachel beginning, turned, in a matter of years, into a competition of many men. With plastic crammed under their stretched peck skin as a perfunctory visual reminder that the Ms. Olympia was, after all, about women. If, anatomically speaking, Kong and Gibbons represented something close to the female ideal in the 1970s. Professional female bodybuilding became an activity geared towards becoming the opposite of that female ideal, under the pretense of competing towards an anatomical zenith for women. Is it the competition factor, that is at the root of change for change's sake in women's bodybuilding and, for that matter, current men's bodybuilding? Take, for example, these shots of Alyssa Loughran taken around 2015. Genetically, she's something a pin-up artist would conjure, but would judges, coaches, and other experts inform her that, in order to advance in competitions, to take things to the next level, she needed bigger caps on her delts, to be more shredded, more vascular, have surgery, take male hormones and other drugs, to have her awkwardly shove her arms out to display flaring lats, etc. In other words, ignore her genetic gifts in order to have her conform to an inferior mold. Sandra, Bridget, and Alyssa were, and are, genetic elites but the trendy excesses of change for change's sake, rocked by competitions which demand drama, supplanted nonconformist genetic elites with a sort of elite, of non-elites, who comply to all the demands compelled by their judges, coaches, and others proclaiming expertise. <laughs>